Good morning. We want to welcome you to Eden UMC online. It's a beautiful day, and we are so glad that we can be in worship with you. And so we hope that you've had a good week, that um, you have seen God's hand in this week, and um, a few a little warmer temperatures have been welcome, and the sun that shines has been welcome, and it just gives us this inkling that spring is coming. Hallelujah. And so now I encourage you to center your hearts and your minds as we quiet, quiet those spaces and listen to the prelude. Worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Amen. 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 you are, we encourage you to join us this morning. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer praise, the glories of my God and King, the heart triumphs of His grace. If eloquent I could display and every language sing a thousand words could never say the praise I have for thee song with saints from every age 
thousand years will be as one when face to face I see the splendid beauty of the sun, the one who died for me. to worship you, that you give us voices, and you give us our very beings, that we can be in worship to you. And what a marvelous thing it is to think of a thousand tongues singing praise to you. Like God, you are an almighty, a holy God. May all that we do glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising. My Savior all the day long. 
fix a mission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Just watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His. gather this morning and take our prayers and our thoughts and our our very beings to the Lord. Today we, we will be talking about um, a spiritual discipline of submission, of submission, and that's just giving to God our lives, submitting to God who we are, submitting to God us. So as we go to prayer, it's a good place to begin that space to confess where we have failed God, to confess our sins, to give God the glory, to be in that attitude of just submission this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you have given us this day. You have given us this brand new day. And from whenever we are listening, whatever the time is, it's still a brand new day that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the promises of new life that there is in spring. As we listen to birds sing, as we see the sun shining brightly, it's an encouragement to us that something is coming. But even bigger than spring is the fact that you were resurrected from the cross. You died and paid the price for our sins. But death did not defeat you. For on the third day, you rose again and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father. Lord Jesus, there are no words that can thank you. But may our lives be living examples. May we live the way that you taught us. May our light shine for you in the world so that others may see that there is hope, there is promise, there is salvation, that we don't just live in a land of darkness, there is light. And it shines brighter than any darkness can ever shine. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you for this season that we are walking through called Lent. We are reminded of the journey that you went on in the wilderness, being tempted by Satan. Forty days and forty nights without food. You were hungry. You were tired. 
that you walk the journey. Like God, may we be willing to walk the journey with you, surrendering our lives and taking up our crosses and following you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We pray, Lord, this morning for those that are suffering, for those that are lost and lonely, for those that do not have a home or enough food to eat, for those that are in conflict. We pray for the nations, Lord God. We pray for our nation. Lord, we pray that love is, is stronger than hate. That we begin loving those that are right close by us. And then extending that love so it grows into communities, into states, into our nation. Oh, Lord God. We need you. We need you this hour. We need you every second of every day. We need you. So meet us wherever we are this morning, Lord, bringing healing and comfort and compassion, bringing that love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we are silent for a few minutes as we offer our own prayers to you. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. And we join together in saying the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the
Amen. Amen. So this morning, we're, we're kind of back in a familiar go- um, gospel lesson. And yet, it's so, so important as we're looking at spiritual disciplines, and we have looked at the spiritual discipline of prayer. We have looked at the spiritual discipline of the Word, the Bible, the Scriptures, how important they are to us, how important they were to, to Jesus as he lived his life. And as he walked out, it was 40 days in the wilderness, And Satan tempted him. He called on the very word of God, the very scriptures. He spoke those back to Satan. He gave the word of God back to Satan. How important it is for us to have those scriptures in our heart, to have them there so that when the enemy is present or when we are in need, when we are lost, we can call on the Lord and we can repeat those scriptures back to God in prayer. And so how important that word is. Today we we talk about um, the spiritual discipline of submission. Submission. And we're going to hear the gospel lesson in two different translations because I think it's important that we kind of just look at what it says in two different ones. And so you're first going to hear um, it coming from the NRSV translation. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers... Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so we hear about taking up the cross, taking up our cross and following Jesus. Now we hear this from the message, which puts it in just kind of modern language, which, you, which I've um, given the scripture in this translation before. But hear these words. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding yourself your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his Father. Accompanied by an army of angels, you'll get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky, by and by. Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom's glory. Thanks be to God for his word this morning. And as we listen to it in two different translations, that hopefully will help you. And I encourage you to do that with the scripture, to either do word searches on words or Read it in different translations. It will help you in your understanding. And just see what it it has to say and pray on that. And so this morning as we look, and I was, there's several spiritual disciplines that we could talk about. And we can't talk about all of them between now and, and Palm Sunday and Easter. But we definitely can touch on some of them. And they are so important in our daily our daily lives. So this thing about being a discipline of submission, of submission, we may not like that word, but I want to put it in um, some different ways that we can look at it. So you submit, like if you're taking classes at school, you submit your papers to your teacher. You either submit them online, which that's what's happening a lot anymore, is that things are submitted online, but you give them. You give them. You do the work. You give them to the professor or to the teacher for them to look at them. And so we, we are used to doing that kind of submitting. 
where we give, turn something in. Soon it's going to be tax time. And so you work on those and you submit them and give them to the government. You turn them in. We submit them. We give them. And so what is this deal about um, having submission to the Lord and allowing him to have his way in our life, allowing his will to be done in us? That isn't always so easy because we've got it all figured out. We, we've got the plan. We, we know there's, there's things that we want to have happen. There's things we like. What is this about giving it all to Jesus? Jesus is in the beginning, in the end, was the word. The word is God and Jesus is in the flesh. Jesus is the word. It's, it's part, he's over us. He created us. We should be able to trust him. And part of this submitting and giving our will to Jesus is our trust in him. Do we trust? Will we keep our eyes on him? Do we trust that he has our best interests at stake? Even if he's leading us in a path that goes in a different direction than what we were going on. You know, it says that we need to get out of the driver's seat and let him drive. Let him drive. He's got the perfect plan, the perfect directions. He won't lead us astray. We don't always want to do that. That is hard. So that's one of those spiritual disciplines that we need to work on is letting go. Letting go of our stuff. Whether it's our worries, our frets, our fears. Letting go of our determination to do it our way whether it's letting go of all of the things that we, we like and we put almost before Jesus, that we let go of those and allow Jesus to, to lead. And what we will find that comes out of that are great blessings. Great blessings. We want to be walking in the will of God. We want to be walking in the will of God. And that means that in order to be in this place of a spiritual di- discipline of submission, we have to be in a place that we are, are talking to the Lord. We are in that place of prayer. We are in that place of meditating and, and reading and, and taking in the scriptures and placing them on our hearts. Because then we will learn more about what the will of Jesus is for us. And we will, it will be easier for us to let go of our will and give it to the Lord. Recently, I had a decision to make, and it was, it was weighing on me. And I had been praying about it, and, it was, and the time was getting closer to when I just had to make the decision. And, and I, I called one of my sons, and my, both of my children are, are excellent followers of Jesus. And I called one of them, and I said, I really need you to pray. I need to be able to, um, I want to hear from the Lord. I want to make sure my decision is aligned with his will. Not just a decision that, that I make on my own. Pray. You invite others to pray with you. Pray to, uh, for, for the will of God to be done. For the will of God to be done. I wanted to make sure that I was making the right choice, that it was the will of the Lord, not mine. And if we walk in that path and we give it to God and we give it to the Lord, he does answer. He does answer. We may struggle a little bit with the situation. We may kind of walk around and say, Lord, I'm not hearing clearly. And we'll see examples in the scriptures of where others really wanted to hear from the Lord. And they they would even, um, you know, they would wrestle with that as well. They would wrestle with, with, um, with what God had to say to them or whether God, where God was leading. Sometimes they would argue, think about Moses, surely, Lord, surely that isn't what you want me to do. You don't want me to go and ask Pharaoh to let my people go. I I don't speak well. Don't ask me to do that. The Lord asked him, and finally Moses, you know, he takes his brother with him and his brother speaks fine. And so Together they ask Pharaoh and they fight for the freedom of God's people. 
That doesn't happen right away. But giving our will to God is a huge thing. It's a huge, it's a huge thing. It changes everything. And what you discover when you allow it to be God's will, when you let him have your desires and your, your thinking, it turns out better than you could have ever imagined it on your own. It does. It turns out better than you could ever imagine it on your own. You know, Paul is a good example of embracing suffering but it says in the scripture, don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. We follow the Lord. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way. And we definitely see how Jesus sacrificed himself. He gave himself for our sins. He died on a cross for us. He was perfect, not any sins at all, and yet he paid the price for our sins. He sacrificed his very life for you and I. Because of the love that he has for us, he died on that cross. And death did not keep him there. It did not keep him down. We know that's the Easter message for on the third day, Jesus Christ arise is from the dead it is the good news he paid the price for us so if he's willing to die for us why are we not willing to submit ourselves and give ourselves to him pray on your journeys each step of your journey of your life for the Lord to lead for the Lord's will to be done in all things in all things even your agenda for the day, where you're, what you're going to do for the day, may the Lord lead. And so, I want to encourage you this day, stay in, the, stay in the scriptures, continue to talk to God. You can talk to God anytime. Anytime, day or night. He's there to listen. And we need that conversation with him. And we need to be available for us to listen. We have to listen. We may be like Moses and say, no, I, no, Lord, that's not, I, I don't want to go in that direction. But the Lord knows best. So I want to encourage you this day to be willing to just let the Lord have your will. To trust in him and trust in all ways. To surrender everything to him. I promise you that it is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that we can surrender ourselves to you. We thank you that you love us so much that you died for us. That you provided a way for us to be in favor with God because you paid the price for our sins. Lord God, as we celebrate Holy Communion this morning, we, may we come in that space willing to surrender our very lives to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making a way. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. They were in the Passover meal, the meal that was celebrated traditionally, uh, gathered together to celebrate the Passover meal in the upper room. Jesus, with his disciples, his friends, he had walked with them and he had shared with them and they, they came together to have a meal together. So I encourage you now that if you um, retrieve your elements of some kind of bread or a cracker or something or some kind of juice that you can share this morning from wherever you are. And so Jesus had gathered around the table with his disciples and they were 
you know, I can just, when you read in the scriptures, you just know that Jesus was a likable person. People followed him. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And I just imagine it sitting around that table. There was all sorts of things going on, all sorts of things being discussed. There was laughter. There was good food. There was um, this friendship amongst all of them being shared. And yet there was knowledge by Jesus that he was moving into a time that was going to be very difficult. And she kind of prepares the disciples a little bit of what was to come. What had been prophesied, what was to come. And so as they gathered around the table, he took the bread. And he gave thanks to God the Father. He prayed, as we pray today, we give thanks to God the Father for the gift of bread. We pray that the Holy Spirit comes and fills and fills the elements and fills each one of us with his presence. We are reminded that Jesus' body was broken, given for each one of us. Following the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks to God the Father, and prayed for the presence of the Holy Spirit to work through the element of the fruit of the vine, as well as to each person who partook of it. He spoke that this was the blood of the new covenant given for us. His blood shed for us. Thanks be to God for what he gives to each one of us. So now I encourage you as Jesus broke the bread. That you take your bread that has been given for you and that you eat and partake of it, remembering that you are loved. God's grace is continual. It's enough. You can trust in Jesus. Then I invite you to take the cup that has been given for you, blood that has been poured out for you, the blood of Jesus shed, so you might have life and have it abundantly. Take and drink, knowing that God's grace is enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. an old hymn but you know it is it has wonderful words and may it be a prayer for us today as we sing it a prayer that is in our attitude of giving it to Jesus
journey through Lent. May we be in that attitude of just surrendering and giving it all to Jesus. I promise you it won't be bad. He will guide us and direct us and lead us. He cares for us. So now as we leave this place, go know how, knowing how much you are loved, you are cherished, you are adored by the King of all kings. Allow yourself to grow closer to him as we continue our journey. In Jesus' name we pray.